Thank you. Thank you. We now move to topical questions. Question one, Bruce Crawford. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the comments in the recent House of Lords Committee report regarding extending the franchise to 16 and 17 year olds for the 2016 Scottish election. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presenting officer, the Scottish Government does not accept the views expressed in the House of Lords Committee report. What both parliaments have been asked to do is to consider the transfer of the power to the Scottish Parliament to lower the voting age as recommended by the Smith Commission. Section 30 of the Scotland Act 1998 is a tailor-made process for doing this. This process has been used many times, including to enable the Scottish Parliament to legislate to hold the referendum on independence last year. The Scottish Government's proposal to extend the franchise to 16- and 17-year-olds in Scottish Parliament and local authority elections will be the subject of a bill that will be scrutinised in detail by this Parliament. Many of the points in the report will be considered as part of that process and need not affect consideration of the order. Bruce Croft. Thank you, Deputy First Minister, for his answer. Is the Deputy First Minister aware that the Devolution for the Powers Committee has now met personally with over 150 high school pupils from across mm -hmm. Scotland and surveyed over 1,000 online, with the vast majority supporting the extension of voting rights for 16 for elections in Scotland? And does he agree that before coming to their conclusion on voting rights for 16 and 17 year olds, the House of Lords Constitution Committee However remarkable the idea might be to them, should have engaged in a real and meaningful discussion with young people about this important matter. John Swinney. I think that would have been helpful. Uh, the um, exercise that uh, this Parliament legislated for in the referendum, which enabled young people to, of 16 and 17 years to participate in the election, I think is viewed uh, across the board as one of the most successful elements of democratic participation that we have seen in many years in Scotland and one of the key democratic triumphs of the referendum campaign. I think any of us who witnessed the engagement and the enthusiasm of young people to exercise their democratic rights um, saw the, the value and the impact that they had on the process. And I think, crucially, uh, we all saw that young people were able to exercise their views and their contribution in a substantive way in the referendum process. And therefore, the concerns and views expressed by the House of Lords Committee report are, in my view, unfounded in that respect. And the point that Mr Crawford makes about the extensive engagement that the uh, Devolution for the Powers Committee has undertaken, uh, in a sense, opens up the uh, awareness and the scrutiny of this important area of activity, and I'm glad that it's had such a positive response for the committee. Bruce Crawford. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, would the Deputy First Minister further agree with me that it would be utterly astonishing and deeply regrettable if on Thursday the House of Lords, the unelected House of Lords, failed to agree to pass the draft order, particularly given that the House of Commons agreed without a vote on the 2nd of February, and that all parties represented in this Parliament support the proposal? to extend the franchise to 16- and 17-year-old votes uh, in this Parliament? First Minister. I, I think there is something um, wholly absurd about an unelected House of Parliament um, trying to exercise some constraint on the willingness of two democratically elected institutions, the House of Commons and the Scottish Parliament, who wish to extend the franchise to 16- and 17-year-olds within our society. And I think it also would be um, uh, equally absurd if um, a, a group of young people who were so able to exercise their democratic responsibilities so effectively and so fully in the referendum last September, um, were, if their uh, cohort uh, were to be denied the opportunity to participate in the 2016 Scottish Parliament and 2017 local authority elections. I think for many young people, it will be very strange that they were able to participate in the referendum but won't be able to participate in the forthcoming United Kingdom general election. But that is an issue that I democratically accept is for the House of Commons and the House of Lords to determine. What would be absurd is if two democratically elected parliaments in the House of Commons and the Scottish Parliament were to have their will thwarted on this matter. So I hope the House of Lords takes the opportunity on Thursday to support the order. Jack Bailey. 
whilst we would always note the concerns of the House of Lords Constitution Committee, um, it certainly doesn't bear out our experience in the referendum, and I associate myself with the Cabinet Secretary's remarks about the participation of young people. It is important to recognise that votes for 16 to 18 year olds was passed unanimously by the House of Commons. Labour is absolutely committed to extending the franchise as are very many others in this chamber. But I wonder whether the Cabinet Secretary would also agree with our proposals to abolish the House of Lords, replacing it with a Senate of Nations and Regions, giving Scotland a stronger voice in the United Kingdom. Deputy First Minister. <coughs> well, President Officer, it, it's, um, it, I, I always endeavour to find points of agreement with Jackie Bailey, and on some of this, uh, she and I are as one. I, I very much agree with her on the point in relation to the Section 30 order. I um, appreciate the support of the Labour Party for this order within uh, Parliament, and notwithstanding the legitimate scrutiny that will be exercised in the Bill when it comes forward, which is entirely the proper preserve of the Labour Party to exercise that. In relation to the House of Lords, Jackie Bailey will be familiar with the fact that I am not a fan of the House of Lords. Um, I, uh, I think that we would manage without the House of Lords uh, really quite well. Uh, obviously, the questions about the future constitutional structures, Jackie Bailey and I will not uh, have agreement on that, since I, uh, despite the disappointment of the referendum result in September, remain committed to a unicameral Scottish Parliament uh, managing the democratic affairs of an independent country. Jack Bailey. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. An unexpected opportunity to ask a further question. But can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, specifically in relation to 16- and 17-year-olds, whether some of the efforts that went into um, increasing the registration for the um, referendum will actually be replicated in terms of the Scottish Parliament elections? Because I think there was much we can learn from, from there, from the good practice that, that was extended across Scotland. Deputy First Minister. I think, that's, I think that's a very valid point. I think what was clear during the referendum process was that young people had <coughs> the opportunity to understand uh, about the issues that were involved in the referendum. From my personal experience, I saw those issues being taken forward very seriously by young people with a tremendous amount of engagement. Um, I watched one particular a um, major debate during the referendum campaign in which the, uh, the now First Minister was involved with young people in the hydro. Uh, all I can say about it is I'm glad I wasn't on the panel uh, because it looked like a very a, well, courteous but demanding environment uh, to participate. And I think any ob observer of that process would see that the young people of Scotland had, um, had done the country proud by the way in which they had contributed to that debate. So I think the, uh, we have to accept that the voting by 16 and 17 year olds is a new part of our democratic process. Therefore, we have to make sure young people are properly and dispassionately equipped for that process. And the government will consider seriously how these issues are taken forward. And of course, that is a material point that Jackie Bailey will be free to advance during the uh, consideration of the bill that follows the passage of the Section 30 order. Nigel Don. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm, I'm wondering whether the Deputy First Minister could confirm it's actually very important that the House of Lords does not stick its oar in at this point, because actually any delay in bringing forward this order will actually seriously impact on, on our ability uh, to uh, enfranchise 16 and 17 year olds uh, for the next Holyrood election. First uh, Mr Don makes absolutely correct point. Time is literally of the essence on this issue, presiding officer. Um, the order um, has to be approved by the Privy Council before the, um, the, the Westminster Parliament rises for the United Kingdom election. The Privy Council meeting is, if my memory serves me right, um, on the 19th of March, and if it does not reach that meeting of the Privy Council, then the order cannot come into force, and therefore the ability of this Parliament to properly legislate for the exercise of these functions and to then give adequate time for the necessary electoral registration issues to follow on from that, which are not, uh, they are not straightforward arrangements, they need to be done carefully and effectively, um, uh, that opportunity will be lost. So Mr Don makes absolutely the correct point that there is, um, there is next to no time for the House of Lords to do anything other than to respect the democratic will of this Parliament and of the House of Commons. Alex Johnson. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. I speak as one of the few members of this chamber who actually voted against the provision uh, for 16 and 17 year olds to vote in the referendum, but by virtue of the experience of that referendum has changed his position uh, on extending the franchise to 16 and 17 year olds. Uh, would the uh, Cabinet Secretary agree with me that in expressing that unity, that should send a clear message to anyone who is concerned about this process to recognise that there is now unanimity on the subject of granting the franchise to 16 and 17 year olds in future Scottish elections and that while it is right to ask questions, it is wrong to stand in the way of that unanimous process. Deputy First Minister. It's always, it's always a delight to see Mr Johnson changing his mind about something. I just, I, just, I just wonder what else we might, with our powers of persuasion, get him to change his mind about in future issues. So we'll keep on. Now that we know, now that, we know that Mr Johnson has some room in his mind to consider alternative propositions, we'll try ever harder to persuade him of the merits of them. I do welcome his contribution because I do, in all seriousness, I think it is welcome that the Conservative Party, who had the reservations about this issue, have taken a different view based on the evidence and the experience. And I compliment the Conservative Party for doing that. Uh, I think that adds to the, uh, the weight of my argument that Parliament is of one on this question across all political perspectives. And as I said in my answer to Jackie Bailey, there will be... Um, a, 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 a piece of legislation that will have to come through this Parliament to put in place these arrangements. At that time, there will be ample opportunity for all manner of specific issues to be considered, and the Government, of course, will allocate the necessary time to make sure that is the case. Um, but uh, to get to that point, the order must be cleared of the Privy Council before the Westminster Parliament rises for the United Kingdom election, and I hope that the a contribution that Mr Johnson has made will help to encourage that process this Thursday. Thank you. That ends topical question time. The next item of business is a debate on motion number 12381 in the name of Fergus Ewing on the legal writings counterparts and delivery Scotland Bill.